Hi everyone, welcome to my backyard. Today we're doing a garden tour and then we're going to make our own pickles. So right now I'm standing in a side portion of our yard where we have like a little patio and behind you is actually my one of my tomato gardens. So I'm gonna turn you around and show you that. I made this raised bed using some extra concrete blocks that a friend gave us. They're kind of like broken and stuff, so this was perfect for um, this application and not like actually building something. I have some parsley here. This is curly parsley. And so I like to grow some things inside the actual holes of the concrete block. Just kind of keeps it corralled a little bit. And I have all these tomato plants. These came mostly from Burpee. some here's some ripe ones here so this is um, so three this is six tomato plants in here but I only had four cages So there's six tomato plants in here, but four cages, so I'm just trying to get some of the other, some of the cages to help hold some of the other plants. Um, it didn't work out exactly as planned. Let's see these. Some of them are falling over a little bit with some of the wind that we've had up here, so I just have to fix this one in this little spot i'm actually regrowing some romaine i cut the bottom of romaine off and then you put it in water and it will start to sprout and then you can just plant it and it will start to grow for you and these are these long stems here these are wild onions you can see the little, oh, see that, these long, tall, they kind of look like really thick scallions. And then we always plant some marigolds around to um, help keep out tomato worms. This is where we have most of our herbs. These are also from Burpee. This is sage basil which actually sprouted two baby basils thyme and oregano and then oh and rosemary the rosemary didn't get as big as i thought it would i always forget it over here and then again we have some marigolds in here to help keep out any bugs so we also have a maple tree here and juniper bushes and they do have juniper berries on them, so I want to look into how to preserve the juniper berries and cook with them because it's just another thing that we can, you know, use in our kitchen. This is my pineapple sage plant, and it really does smell like pineapple. I've used it to make drinks before, I've dried it, all that, so um, that's what I'll be doing again with this. This is mostly cucumbers. I did have some lettuce in here before. I have this fennel. I actually grew this fennel from a seed. I'm very proud of it. <laughs> it smells amazing. I can't wait to pick some. And I am going to be using some fennel in the pickles. And so let's see if we can get any more cucumbers. But here's one. So we'll use that. So this might be a bit hard to kind of show you, but I'll definitely talk about it and then I can bring the camera through. Um, these, these are carrots and I kind of just threw the seeds in here. And then I have eggplant, squash, some peppers, and more squash. So There's a bunch of little carrots down there. Well, here's one of our eggplants, another one. 
This, I believe, is going to be a white eggplant. Well, I think this was it. I think this was the regular eggplant, or the Black Beauty. And it was giving you these little itty bitty... Oh wait, it's right here. Is this it? This looks like it. Yeah, it just never really, like, took off. And it's just small. I believe these ones are my golden squash, which are the really dark yellow ones. It is a pepper plant. I'm not sure what kind of pepper. I do not remember. There's some peppers growing on this one. Peppers have really taken off for me before, but not so much this year. This one, these are the straight neck squash. Oh yeah, here's some more growing. The straight neck squash. And then this one is zucchini. And there's one big zucchini I see right here. So I saw one big zucchini in here. I'm going to grab it. Another raised bed that we made with the concrete blocks. We had enough to make two beds. Um, the only issue is we obviously didn't finish it before the tomatoes started growing and so they were not supported because we also, I was going to put the chicken wire up around here to help hold the tomatoes up with stakes as well through here and unfortunately we missed the boat on that. So. <laughs> Um, but we do have a lot of tomatoes here. I'm going to just try and go through them a little bit, help support them, and put the chicken wire around as well. And then we have three blueberry plants, but none of these have really taken off at all. You do have to cross-pollinate blueberry plants, which helps them. This is really the only one that has blueberries, but they have been eaten by birds too. The other ones didn't get blueberries this year. Just this one. This is an apple tree. We planted this, I believe, last year. And it has grown quite a bit because it was just a little, little baby before. But it hasn't gotten any fruit yet. I think it takes multiple years to fruit. So this is basically the last section of our garden. We have mint, grape leaves, and some peppers, and an almond tree. So I will turn, I will take the camera and show you all this. So we have grape leaves there. This is mint, more mint. And then I have three peppers. Um, what is it? Oh, this one says it there. Tabasco. Nothing yet. It looks like it's starting a little bit right there, but Tabasco. Did I put a marker in this one? Oh. Um, sweet bell pepper, it looks like this one's supposed to be sweet bell pepper, and then this one is jalapeno. I actually picked a bunch of red jalapenos off it yesterday, and here's some more starting to grow. And the last thing back here is this almond tree. This will take several years to actually make almonds, but definitely look it up if you didn't know almonds grew on trees they're really cool so we are just about at the last bit here I have some fennel which has done really really well we have another hydrangea this one's pink we have some tiger lilies and unfortunately some of them just lost their their leaves and then we also have bee balm I really like bee balm I think this is the third Oh, and I actually planted a little bit of celery too, the same as the romaine. I just put it in, put the bottom in water, and then waited for it to sprout. So the celery should be coming. Um, the bee balm I'm actually going to trim. It doesn't look in awesome condition, but I like to dry the bee balm. It's really, really delicious on salads. You can use the leaves, which are like oregano-like or the petals even, which is just more for color, they're edible. These are my 
my three big fennel plants. These actually did come from Burpee, and I'm really excited to pull this out. There we go, so look at all this fennel, oregano, this is the mint, it's a smaller variety, this is the bell pepper, we've got one tiny bell pepper, this is the tar, let's try and get it good, it's so shadowy. lemon tree. Okay, so now it is time to make our pickles. I have a bunch of cucumbers here. These are all from the garden. This is the one that I just picked. Oh, <laughs> so how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Yep. And these are straight cucumbers, which is not pickling cucumbers, but we're still going to use them. We're still going to get great results. Won't be a problem. I'm going off of a recipe from Foodie with Family for Clausen pickles. And so you don't heat anything, which helps keep the crunch. There are also, I guess, um, I looked at a, few, a bunch of different recipes. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so I looked at quite a few different recipes just to get kind of an idea of how I wanted to make the pickles and what way I want to do it. Definitely don't want to be canning them. That is just not going to work for me right now. It's a little bit too much work. Um, so I want to make these refrigerated pickles, which you basically just put all the ingredients into the jar and then we're going to leave them on the counter for two to four days, depending on how, um, how they taste after two days and then you put them in the fridge. Just basically what I'm going to be doing is just trying to preserve as much of this produce as I can, you know, depending on how much I have at certain times, just so none of it goes to waste. So this will be the first thing I do, which is the pickles. Not exactly like the foodie with family recipe is intending, but basically I'm just looking for some guidance and we're just gonna kind of do it how I would like to, and I always like to use up things that I have, so I have this pickling vinegar. Her recipe wants cider vinegar. I have just some salt, red pepper flakes, we're going to add a little spice, garlic, and I've had a really hard time finding and or growing dill, so I'm actually going to be using fennel fronds, which I think will be honestly pretty delicious, so we'll go with that. And what I'm going to do is cut these into spears instead of circles. I really like spears. And also, uh, I was watching an Alton Brown video and he said to cut off the blossom end, which I believe is this end. Maybe I'll just do it on both. <laughs> cut off a good chunk because it contains enzymes that can um, soften, soften the pickle. So that's also kind of the purpose of this recipe is to have like a crunchy pickle because you're not heating it. So we also want to just kind of prevent that as much as possible with whatever those enzymes are. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to be cutting it like a spear. So I cut it in half first, then cut it down. And then hmm, just in half. So this gives you a pretty good chunk of cucumber. And then you can just cut it one more time this way. So you get a nice bite-sized chunk. That's only one of my pickles so far, so we're definitely going to need more jars. I actually found this big jar. It has this little latch, so I'm actually going to use this because this will work really well. Now, we're gonna need more garlic too. All right, 
I'm going to start putting like the spices in the jars. So I'm just going to shake some of these red chili flakes or no. Yeah, they're red chili flakes. I actually made these myself. <laughs> we had a ton of chilies one year. I might have to take one of these out. There we go. I might have to take two of these out. I definitely don't want it to be like two packs so they don't, so they actually get like the flavor. Throw that in there. Smash a garlic for each one. So I'm going to do a little bit of garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of celery salt. These pickles are so, or they're not even pickles yet. These cucumbers are so crunchy. I really hope they keep their crunch. All right, this looks pretty full. Let's move on to the next jar. Okay, so I had to get one more jar so far, but I also have one more cucumber and I have a little bit more cucumber left here on my cutting board and I'm going to start filling it, filling up the jars to make sure that I have enough um, liquid because obviously I can just eat the cucumber, but I don't want to cut it all up and do all this if I can't actually pickle it. Oh, I gotta add the garlic to this one. So let's see. Cover. Oh, look at that. Perfect. There's like a little bit left. All right, we finished it. Okay, so now we have <laughs> a lot of pickles. Look at, you don't know how to pick it up? Here. <laughs> so here are all our pickles, soon to be pickles. <laughs> so here are all our cucumbers ready to become pickles. We have six jars here and just get a small bit of waiting time and then we will be ready to eat and I'm so excited. It's a lot of pickles but I like pickles. <laughs> so I'm happy about this and I'm happy to be preserving this food so that we can eat it and enjoy it for as long as we can. Um, you know, without it going bad. So, I've loosely, I don't know, this one seems kind of wacky. Okay, there we go. So, I've loosely capped all of these as the recipe states, and now we'll wait.